Have you dreamed of buying a home in Florida? Not really sure how to do it, how much it's going to cost or where to go? Well, worry no more. I'm here to help. When I say me, me and my new mate, Ken Posick, watch this video and learn all you need to know about buying your Florida home here on Disney for Brits. Hey d for beers David here. How are you? I've got a treat for you this week, something a little bit different. The first of a new series that I'm calling Disney for Brits Meets. And this week is something which will be of interest to any of you that have ever wanted to own property in Florida. I know it was a dream of mine long before COVID, and I searched around the internet and found various realtors, that's estate agents to you and me, in Orlando and various other places and I came across this guy called Ken Posek. Ken's a really easy guy to watch and explains things really really well and that's really important because there's a massive difference between the Orlando market and the UK market. So I carried on watching and watching and watching and at one point I actually wrote him an email said Ken it would be great to me I'd love to have a chat with you and share with all my d for beers So what you're going to see is a conversation between me and Ken all done through the magic of Zoom. I set up a whole load of questions where I talked about the differences and I hope you'll find it really interesting. Now, we haven't seen a buyer's market since 2017, 2016, something like that. And so, you know, right as soon as I moved here, things things changed. Um, it's not because I moved here, but, you know, just happened to... <laughs> Yeah. The coral. It's the Posick effect. That's what it was. Exactly, exactly right. Do, do you think that the building of new homes, and as I said, it, it's everywhere. And when we were there March last year, we were looking at all the new developments. They were everywhere. Is that moving at a pace to address that balance, do you think? You know, it was. So it's an interesting thing. I know you guys had a, a recession in 2006, 7, 8, kind of similar to what we did, the, the global yeah. recession, really, right? Um, and so through that time, builders were not able to keep up with, uh, they were losing neighborhoods, right? So these developers would go in, they'd buy the land, they'd develop the land, but then the economy froze. And so there was no money for them to build homes. And so those homes were just simply not built. We have what we call this this new construction gap where we really need another 1.5 to 2 million homes in our country to settle up with the amount of people that there are. Yeah. And so that's really what the whole run up over the past three years was, was that you had a lot of cheap money in the market and a lot of buyers that were really interested to purchase and yet no yeah. homes for them to buy, which then got the supply and demand all out of whack. So builders have now finally over the past you know year or so figured out uh, they need to build more homes, but then also it was trades that were a problem, the electricians, yep. the plumbers, the roofers, uh, and then it was also um, the supplies. So windows and block and wood and frame, you know, all of these kind of things, um, unfortunately, were just backlogged. And so um, finally, we're in a place where you can build a house and instead of it taking two years, it might take eight months. And that's yep. a, a, a normal kind of process. Yeah. So so the jobs to be in, in Orlando now, apart from a realtor, is a builder, a plumber, an electrician, those kind of guys, because there's so right. much going on there, I guess. You got it. So what what about the sort of costs? Have you got some some rough guidelines of cost for say a, a three bed a three bed townhouse as an example? Again, that's a three bed detached for a three bed terraced for us. Yeah, you know, it really is going to be dependent on areas, but you can get something in the high 300s uh, in like the Davenport area. Again, maybe 25, 30 minutes from Disney. Um, or if you're looking in Celebration uh, or some of the more more affluent, nicer areas might be 500 plus for something like that. And I think one of the things I noticed when watching your videos and a lot of the other realtors is you go and see a lovely show home. And the show home is not the basic house. If you're looking at a new house, it is loaded with extras, isn't it? And on occasions, you can pretty much double the price of the home because of all the stuff that they've put inside. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the builders are going to show you everything that can be, um, but maybe not what the basic home is. And so you might see something that says, so the numbers that I quoted, that was on the resale side, but on new yep. construction, 
you could go in and, and it says, uh, starting from the three hundreds and you're like, Oh, wow, that seems very affordable. I can, I can afford a 300. So you go in and it's okay. 300 just for the home, but not for the land underneath it. Yeah. And then, Oh, if you want upgrades, if you want structural, you know, say you want to turn that office into a bedroom and you want a structural upgrade. Well, that's more, uh, say you want, you know, granite comes standard, but you really want quartz because who's putting granite in anywhere. And so you want to upgrade to quartz. And then very quickly that $300,000 place turns into 500 and, uh, and w- w- with quickness. And, and one of the, other, one of the other things we've seen is flooring, flooring can make a massive difference in kitchens and um, yes. up until recently american kitchens seemed to be a similar style to british kitchens of the 1980s you know the very dark wood with the the dark fit yeah we i've seen a move towards more white and and cleaner looking ones but generally i think your your from price will be those brown kitchens won't it that's right yeah or, or very like um low quality white cabinet uh, right yeah. so they're like something that nobody's really going to want but they're yeah. like hey we have white but you don't really want that you're going to want yeah, to upgrade they, a they show you quality. show you through the candy shop next door that has all the extras and it all start chatting up so one of the things that you mentioned there was one of the gotchas that i took was going to talk about at the end which is the land and and this doesn't make sense to me here's the price of the house and by the way we're going to put eighty thousand dollars on for the land but then I think I looked around and, and obviously the land varies depending on the size of the plot. And, and obviously, if it's got a water view, that makes a massive difference, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Water view, conservation view, where you might have trees behind you, uh, golf course view, or do you back up to the the backside of another house? Yeah. Usually the ones that back up to another house are either free all the way up to maybe ten thousand dollars they're they're the ones that not a lot of people are going to want and yeah you can put up shrubs behind the house and you could put up trees and do some other stuff to try to give you some privacy but it's not as nice as looking out onto a golf course or or a, a pond or a lake yeah. so um, yeah the, the, the nicer the view the more expensive the plot totally and again when we were looking at properties a while ago it certainly stacked up the other thing as well there's some different rules over there in the uk you can't have windows facing each other so if you've got houses next to each other windows can't face each other so you can't look out of your uh, bathroom into somebody else's i don't think that applies there does it that's no that's- it doesn't you you have to talk to the uh, after the fact you have to you know if you build a house you have to think about putting up curtains or maybe fogging out a window or yeah. you know some sort of window treatment so one of the other things that I've noticed when I watch some of the the property brothers, for instance, and their programs, if people have these things called you know fifteen day and thirty day closing, in the UK to buy a property takes between three and six months. That's the general end to end process. Is this something they do just for television, fifteen thirty day closing, or does that actually exist? Yeah, I, I just put a deal under contract this morning that's going to close in two weeks. Uh, it's all cash, right? So if you're getting, yeah. if you're paying cash, you can close as quick as 10 days. The only thing we have to do is get HOA approval and updates and our title. So they make sure that there's no outstanding liens against the property. What are the taxes? They just have to collect all the data. We can do that in about 10 days. Uh, and so if you're cash, that's you know as quick as you want to go. A mortgage side, if you're you're getting a, a, a U.S. citizen loan, if you will, it's anywhere between thirty and forty days. Uh, if you're getting an international loan, it could take you forty-five to sixty uh, for that mortgage because there's just a few other hoops that they need to jump through. Um, so yeah, for sure within forty-five days. Yeah, and, and ours is crazy because there's all kinds of searches on the area, and they talk to the local authority, see what buildings going on, what approvals you have. So it, it take takes a whole lot longer. Right. When people, so I, I guess the answer there is if people, if you're going to go and buy a property with cash, you need to be ready to hand over that cash potentially within two to four weeks, because otherwise, from what you're saying about availability, other buyers are going to get in there and, and grab it. Yeah. So I think, you know, your power of buying it with cash is that you can do a quick close or not. And, and so if if the seller in today's market, they want a quick close and they're looking at two offers and one is a mortgage for 45 days and the other one's a cash two weeks close, they'll take the cash every day. Um, or it could be, hey, we're, we're going to pay cash and we'll let you rent the place back for two weeks after the fact, giving us a total of 30 days. And now the seller has flexibility and you're going to have a better position for you to get in and maybe get one or 2% off the list price, uh, whereas somebody with a mortgage might have a little bit harder time. So one of the things that we have here is certainly in the UK, and it's different in Scotland because obviously we're four different countries pushed together. 
in the UK, you don't have the house until you sign for it. So you can put an offer in on a house. You can get your mortgage. You can do all of the searches. And then at last minute, the buyer can say, actually, I've had a better offer and all your money's been blown. Is that the same in the States there and in Orlando? No, yeah. So what, what you do is, um, so on the resale side, we'll start there. So if it's a used home, you're going to give anywhere between 1% to 3% deposit at the time of agreement. So you say, hey, I want to buy your house for $600,000 and we're going to close in 45 days. We sign a 12-page document that says, here's all of the stipulations. Uh, and then once I place my deposit with the title company, and the title company is like the solicitor and they they also have sort of their own like escrow account. Uh, they're the They're the unbiased third party. They're going to hold the deposit. And as long as I make it through inspection and I get my appraisal done, then at that point, I'm completely locked in. The buyer can't back out and the seller can't back out. Now, if the buyer backs out, the seller keeps the deposit once you get through those inspection periods. Okay. Um, but, but at that point, the seller can't take any other offer until you either, you know, you're obviously closed or the buyer has backed out because they failed to go through their due diligence period. Which is a much fairer process. You know, you, you make your agreement, you do the handshake, and and it's it's moving on. I've heard a lot of on a lot of the videos. I've heard about closing fees. Explain what what they are, please. Yeah, so you're paying for for that. As I mentioned, the title company is that that third party, right? They're the, also the ones that go through the homeowners association and title process and the city permitting and just clean everything up. They put together all of the paperwork, and at closing, you're going to pay for what we call a title policy. Uh, it's an insurance policy that if something was missed during that process that it gets covered for you. Um, and then obviously you're paying for their services. That costs anywhere between one and one and a half percent. And then if you're getting a mortgage, you're also paying for mortgage closing costs and that sort of thing. So all in, I would budget somewhere around three to three and a half percent for closing costs on top of the purchase price. So now hopefully everybody's getting a view that that 300,000 that they say the house is, is not your total amount. You've got money for your mortgage. You've got money for deposits. You've got your 3% closing costs and more. What are the other gotchas that you think sometimes hit people in the house buying process? Yeah, I think there's two things. Um, you know, one, so I know in the UK, you don't have buyer's agency uh, where, where as realtors, you know, we can help buyers that are coming in here. And so that's new for many people. Um, the, the interesting thing in America is that the, the seller actually pays the buyer's agent fee. So you can work with us to help find the best deal out there for you. And you don't have to even pay us. The seller ends up paying us at the end of the day, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, the other gotchas I would say is that insurance cost. I've been telling people do that more upfront instead of waiting to two days before closing to get your insurance during your inspection period, which is that five to seven days right at the beginning, start calling around the insurance company so that you have a really clear idea of what your final payment is going to be. I would also say that you know if you're buying a used house, our AC units, our air conditioning units, they only last, you know, 10 to 15 years. And so if you're buying something that's eight years old and you're shocked because all of a sudden it goes out on you or your roof, you know, there's all these kind of things that start breaking on a house once it gets to be that 10, 15 years old. Um, that's another big one that people are like, you know, you guys build houses to last over there, right? Home, 100 year old, 150 year old homes. Like it's not a rare thing where yeah. stuff in Orlando, you know, it's, you know, 20 to 25 years on average. Yeah, I mean, the place that I'm in was built in 1850. So it, it's not going anywhere in, but then we don't have the weather and the winds. And, and that was going to be something I was going to sort of mention here. You know, I've seen properties being built and they're pretty much wood on the sides. And yeah. then, you know, this shingle, which looks like fabric on, on top, um, they, they tend to be made to be renewed. Are there builders that make houses to last? And, um, and if there are, I presume you're paying a whole lot more money for it. Yeah, there, there's some that that build build them that would withstand a uh, you know even though we don't have earthquakes you know withstand or earthquake yeah, hurricanes though don't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, hurricanes, any kind of weather that you'd ever think of. Um, although our building standards are significantly better than what they were in the '90s and early 2000s, uh, but yeah, they build them with two by six wood at this point on the outside, and they can go two stories with that. Um, they're starting to introduce things like composite siding to where it's actually a, a cement product that is going to last much, much longer than say like stucco was, which I, I hate stucco, but it's everywhere here. Um, and, and so there's some builders that do offer some of these additional kind of uh, insurances for making sure that it withstands the weather, but you're probably going to pay 30 to 40% more than the, the other kind. 
But if you don't pay that, I guess you are looking at refreshing the property potentially every 10 to 15 years on the outside as well, to a degree. That's right. Awesome. That, that's been really, really helpful. I, I mean, I, I did a list of questions and we've we've raced through those and hopefully everybody's found it useful. I'm really interested in what's next for you, though, because obviously I started watching you as, as realtor, um, estate agents to us. I've seen you expand in, into other things and you've got the Orlando Real as well. What else is there in in the, the POSEC catalogue of, of things that you're going to be doing? Yeah. So for us, it's just expanding our agency. So we have 25 agents that work for us and they're all specialized in different things. Some of them help our international clients. Some of them help with investors and and everything in between. So it's going to be growing out the agency. And then the Orlando Real, as you mentioned very kindly, is kind of our, our media company. So uh, it's showing off all the things in Orlando from the newest little coffee shop to the newest uh, Disney ride or Universal ride and, and just trying to be the resource for all things Orlando for uh, people that live here and then also might want to live here one day. And so um, that's kind of our, our two projects that we're working on. And if, if you haven't, anybody that's watching haven't seen any of the videos, go up and find them. They're great fun. They're really relaxing. They will make you really jealous that he's over there and we're over here because there's weather and theme parks and fun. Uh, but they're definitely worth watching. So if they look for the Orlando Real, is it? Com, and yeah, then Orlando.com and, uh, and over on YouTube, it's, um, it's at Ken Posick. Awesome. And if you want to check me out, you'll find me on TikTok now as Disney David. There's some really interesting short ones there. Long form on YouTube, Disney for Brits, and obviously the travel company, d for b Travel, where I help people. I do all the hard work so you don't have to. Ken, I really, really appreciate your time. I know how busy you are, um, but thank you so much for giving me some time today. It's been really useful. I'll put links in the video so that people can see and you can just click and see Ken's work. But I really appreciate your time, Ken. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. Take care.